in a closing prayer, what we might call, in fact, the Lord's Prayer, with hands raised to heaven, Jesus defined the life of the age to come from Daniel 12, the life of the coming age, the life of immortality to be gained in the future kingdom, that they, the potential believers, may come to know you, Father, and defines him as the only one who is true God. And in addition, we are come to, come to know the one you commissioned, Jesus Messiah. So there are two objects then of our Christian knowledge. Firstly, the Father, and the descriptive title of the Father is that he's the only one who is true God. Your child of two understands that if you say language like that, the only one, you exclude all others. Therefore, Jesus' statement there, which he makes the most important of all statements, is absolutely a unitary, non-Trinitarian statement about God, the only one who is true God. In addition, then, we are to love the Son commissioned by God. Would you believe it? Augustine, who has had a, a very adverse effect on a lot of Christian doctrine with his philosophizing and his non-biblical basis for much of what he said, Augustine was so troubled by John 17:3 where clearly the father is o monos alithinos theos. You can hear the monotheism in the Greek there. The monos alithinos theos, the only one who is truly God. Augustine couldn't deal with that. Ah, oh, he said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just change the meaning and the order of the words there. Augustine in his homilies on John says, they're to get to know you, father, and the son as the only one who's true God. That is sheer forgery. Does the public realize what some of these church fathers did, that's absolutely a crime against Scripture because Jesus is proclaiming the unitary, non-Trinitarian creed of his people Israel. And on the screen we have Augustine's twisted and forged version, which should be avoided and regarded as completely false by any intelligent student of Scripture.